Salem Art Fair and Festival is Salem's biggest artistic event. We have 200 artists from all over the country, including some from as far away as the state of Georgia. We have three stages, musical performances all weekend long. Really, it's a chance for the community to come together. After two years with the pandemic, it's so important for us to get out, meet each other, see each other, eat with each other, and hang out together as a community. This event happens every year in July, and we hope to see you next year. It is October on the calendar, everyone, but only this week has it really started to feel like fall around these parts. But it sure took long enough, but autumn has seemingly finally arrived and left summertime in the dust here in Salem. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for tuning in for game number six of Willamette football in 2023, the second half of the season kicking off here in just a few moments. I'm Jeff Lucero, happy to be here with you for the live broadcast from McCullough Stadium today. This Northwest Conference matinee game pits the Bearcats against a very familiar conference foe, the Pacific Lutheran Lutes. We'd also, of course, like to welcome in any Lutes fans tuning in today. Very nice to have you along for the broadcast as well. We'll talk matchups here in just a bit, but first let's talk about the Bearcats and for the Bearcats, they come into the, the game today after setbacks in each of their first two league games, most recently right here at home a week ago today, falling to Whitworth in what was finally their home opener this year. The Bearcats hung around with the Pirates and, in fact, moved the ball very well in their first few drives to open the game. In fact, Whitworth held just a slim 14-7 lead with about five minutes left in the first half, but back-to-back -back turnovers by the Bearcats deep in their own territory quickly turned into 10 points for the Pirates, who went into the break leading 24-7 before making all the right adjustments in the second half, keeping the Bearcats off the scoreboard while scoring the game's final five touchdowns. As things stand, the Bearcats are now 1-4 overall, 0-2 to open league play. The good news for this program, however, they have now played the de facto two best teams in the Northwest Conference right out of the chute and should find themselves in much more competitive contests the rest of the way forward, starting with today's matchup against the two and three loot. Speaking of, let's shift over now and take a quick look at today's opponent for the Bearcats. Part of that two and three start to their season is a record of one and one in conference plays. You see the Lutes taking the field right now. After a 42 to 13 loss at Whitworth a couple of weeks back, they evened their league mark with a bounce back, if narrow victory over Pacific at home last week by a score of 17 to 10. This is the 53rd all-time meeting between these two programs. Overall, the Lutes lead the Bearcats 33-17 with two ties mixed in as well. They've won the past six matchups. Willamette's last win over PLU came back in 2015 up in Parkland by a score of 10-9. Now on offense for the Lutes, things go as starting quarterback Darius Chaffin goes. Folks, I did the math of the 330 plays that the Lutes have run in their first five games in 2023. 
he has either thrown or run it himself on 198 of them. That's exactly 60% of their plays. Not only is he their top passer, of course, but he's also their leading rusher. Without question, their offense is predicated on his success both in and outside the pocket every time they step onto the field. Now, two players to watch on defense, and oh my goodness, are they ever good ones. It starts with senior linebacker Kalen Davis-White. He leads not only the team, but the entire Northwest Conference in tackles with 54, including a career-high tying 15 last week against Pacific. By the way, little fun fact, he first set his career high of 15 tackles also against Pacific almost two years ago to the day of that game last Saturday. Now, among those 54 tackles, eight have been for losses, including four and a half sacks. He's already been named the defensive player of the week in the Northwest Conference twice already this season. Four and a half sacks, though, way behind his teammate Nico Gola, who leads the entire conference in sacks. He ranks sixth in the entire nation, in fact, with seven so far this year. Both he and Davis White were first-team all-conference a season ago, and both appear well on their way to consecutive appointments to that illustrious squad again in 2023. We'll step away for the National Anthem. We'll be right back with kickoff. Welcome back to McCullough Stadium. We're moments away now from kickoff between the one and four Bearcats and the two and three Lutes. A couple of updates to bring you from the Lambert side of things. We do have a change. field for the Bearcats after a one-week absence. Tyler Epifanio makes his return. Big-time threat on the perimeter for this Bearcats offense. 11 catches, 142 receiving yards and a touchdown so far on the season for the Bearcats. So very good to see Tyler back on the field with his squad as well. Captains are on the field. have worn the toss. They defer. KU elects to the seed. So it will be PLU with the first possession of the contest here in just a few moments. The Lutes clad in the black tops, white pants. Gold tops for the Bearcats, white pants. One and one overall record in league play for Pacific Lutheran coming off a 17 to 10 victory against Pacific at home last week. Bearcats getting the two head and shoulders above everyone else. Best teams in this league out of the way, right out of the gate. Toss at Linfield before finally getting a home opener in the first week of October. That's rare. 
It is rare to play four games on the road before you finally get a taste of what it feels like to play in front of your home crowd last Saturday. Balmy, just blistering hot afternoon. It has cooled off dramatically throughout the week here. We've had a lot of rain on and off. There is rain in the forecast, but it's not predicted until later in the afternoon. So hopefully most of this game will be played on dry playing field conditions. Back deep for the Lutes ought to be Jordan Etter. It's actually Noah Pallets back deep. And Camden Dernberger set to kick things off for the Bearcats. I am fired up for this game. This is going to be a good one between two teams kind of licking their wounds a little bit thus far on the season. They have not yet played. Two expectations. Great tackle in space. Working his way upfield, Javi Rodriguez with a beautiful open field tackle. Drops pallets at about the 22-yard line, and it's from there that the Lutes will start the game. Under center for the Lutes. Again, we talked about him in the pregame. Darius Chaffin does a ton for this team. He's been involved on 60% of the snaps, either through the air or on the ground. He's their team's leading rusher, 70 carries, 219 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Has thrown it 128 times, completed 80 passes, just under 1,000 yards, 997 to be exact, seven touches, six INTs. First play from scrimmage, a pass to the flat, makes one man miss. That is Patrick McInerney, the junior from Honolulu, making the catch. Gain of about eight yards on that one. Second and short for PLU. Lamont opens in a 4-3 base defense. Tootie actually has four down linemen, four linebackers, and four DBs. You never really know if they're going to open in a 3-4 or a 4-3, but it's a 4-3 so far in this one. As Grayson Motoyama takes the handoff, shakes free from the first tackler, works his way to the 35, gain of seven, and the Lutz will move the sticks. Two plays, they're out to the 35 now. Offset formation in the backfield. Handoff straight up the gut once again. Motoyama works his way straight forward into the pile. Dropped after a gain of two, maybe three. Oh. Stop the clock and spot the ball just shy of the 38-yard line. Called a gain of three, second and a long seven upcoming for Pacific Lutheran. Lutes break the huddle. Bunch formation to the near side. One wide out up top. Single setback behind Chaffin in the shotgun. Man comes in motion. That's McInerney working left to right across the formation. Snap, handoff, play fake. Rolling to his right, dumping it off underneath. That's Laakea Ane with the catch. Tight end slash fullback for the Lutes. That's his 10th reception on the season. Gain of about four, brings up third and three for PLU. They want to go quick here. Chaffin, two to the near side, one to the top. Tied in on the field as well. Play fake to the flat. Phelan with his first catch, the team's leading receiver. Gang tackled at the 45. Just enough, I believe, yes, it will in fact move the chains. And the Lutes with their second First down of the game's opening drive. Let's pick up the pace again. Chaffin gets rid of it quickly. This is Motoyama out of the backfield. Nice chunk play. Eluding tacklers works his way into Bearcats territory. And that's another first down for Pacific Lutheran at the Willamette 41. Bearcats rotate in some defensive reinforcements. Boots going quickly again. A little spread formation. 
Noah Pallet sets up in the backfield next to Chaffin. Motioning into the backfield was Thor Stepina. And off over the left side of the line. That was Noah Pallets on the carry. Dropped after a gain of a couple. Second and a short eight or a long seven, depending on how you want to look at it. Chaffin from the shotgun. To his left, Noah Pallets once again. Motioning across is Phelan. Phelan didn't get set, and that is an, this is going to come back. This will be an illegal procedure, but there's also a hold in the backfield, so two penalties coming up against the Lutes on this one. Phelan never got set. So an illegal procedure penalty, and then a hold in the backfield as well. Likely, Willamette will take the yardage on the hold rather than the illegal procedure, would be my guess. Uneducated as it may be. Oh, goodness. Holding. Offense, number 51. Those well, penalties offset. That'll teach me. Replay second down. To open my big yap. We have offsetting penalties as Willamette defense lined up in the neutral zone. So we'll just reset, reload. We'll play that one again. I got the hold right. One out of two ain't bad. <laughs> so once again, second and a long seven or a short eight for Pacific Lutheran. Lining up. It's spotted just inside the Willamette 39 yard line. Officially the 38. Chaffin takes the snap. Takes the handoff, dumps it off in the flat. Stepina makes a man miss. Works his way down the near sideline. He's able to gain six or seven after the catch before being forced out of bounds at about the Willamette 30. And that is enough to move the chains. Nice footwork there from Stepina. A 95-yard touchdown pass in the closing moments of the first half against Whitworth. A couple of weeks back, they wound up losing that game 42-13 to, to Whitworth. Snap is bobbled in the backfield by Chaffin. Goes back to get it. Broken play. He'll just throw it out of bounds. Wise move from Chaffin. Ball sailed right through his hands on the snap. Fortuitous bounce right off the carpet. He picked it up, rolled to his right. Did a nice job getting outside of the tackle box. Throw was well past the line of scrimmage. No chance at all for intentional grounding. Good heads up play from Darius Chaffin. Piecing together a nice little season for himself. Interim head coach Tim Rood saying he's just a great athlete. Very dangerous in space. They're going to have to account for him on every play. Looks like the Bearcats moved early. Chaffin's pass, he's got a wide open receiver, able to gobble it in just inside the five. Takes a couple of steps around the pylon and into the end zone. That's Thor Stepina on the receiving end of that beautiful pass floated in by Darius Chapman and the Lutes are on the board on the game's opening drive. Cole Sargent, left-footed place kicker for the Lutes. 12 for 14 on PATs thus far. Looked good on that one. Bangs it through, and the Lutes lead 7 to nothing. The Bearcats' first possession of this contest is coming up in just a few seconds.
actually be David Perez handling kickoff duties for Pacific Lutheran, at least on their first kickoff of the game. Perez up with the ball. Nice kick. Taken just inside the five. Couple of shifty moves from Matt Fiesta. Turned it about 21 yards. And the Bearcats' first drive of the game will begin at their own 26-yard line. So a nice 23-yard return for Fiesta. Micah Ho'o Manawanui, starting quarterback once again here for the Bearcats. Six-foot freshman from Honolulu. To his right, Gabe Herrera. Bunch formation to the near side. Nobody on the far side of the field. Herrera takes the handoff, skips to his left, bounces off one tackler, and is taken down. Ankle tackle after a gain of about three. Make it a gain of two, second and eight for the Bearcats. Across the front line for the Bearcats, Parker Heisey, Isaac Fa uh, Opega, Dylan Carpenter, Dayton Roberts, and Gio Gallardo. The starting O-line for this Bearcat squad. Motioning across is the linebacker turn tight end, Dylan Hall. Sets up on the near side. Oh, oh Manu takes the snap. Finds a man across the middle, Justin Genovia. Breaks one tackle and is hauled down across the 40-yard line. Big, nice chunk play for the Bearcats on their first touch so far. So Genovia, simple crossing pattern. Uh oh, Manu with a beautiful toss, puts it right on him. The Bearcats already in business, first and 10, their own 43. Gabe Herrera on the carry. Penalty marker flies in from behind. We'll check the marker here in just a moment. As it stands, a five yard gain for Gabe Herrera. Holding. Number 54 of the offense. But it's coming back. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. That's Dylan Carpenter called for the hold. That marches the Bearcats back 10 yards. So first and 20 now from their own 32. Mason LaPlante, the tight end on the field. Trips to the near side. One up top, single setback behind Ho'o Manawanui. Now Hall motions into the backfield, sets up alongside Ho'o Manawanui. Takes the snap, turns, hands, and straight forward. It's Gabe Herrera once again. This time Nets about four. So second and 16 upcoming. Fiesta and Trajan Clark at the top of the formation. Genovia here to the near side. Snap back. Pass across. Too high. Intended for Justin Genovia. Got a hand on it, but not able to reel it in. And it'll be third and very long for the Bearcats upcoming. It's a very dangerous Lutz defense. Interim head coach. Tim Rude telling me earlier this week, this is the most unique and diverse defense in our entire conference. They just present a lot of difficulties on the edge. A lot of guys who can beat you. Nico Gola, sixth in the nation with seven sacks. Leads, of course, the Northwest Conference in that stat. Number five coming off the edge. Keep an eye on him. The Bearcats going to have to count for him all day long here today. 3-4 defense for Omano Anui. Dr deep drop, deep pass, has a man streaking down the field, eludes the last defender, and he is into the end zone. No flags on the play. Matt Fiesta takes it to the house. Third and 17, and the Bearcats come away with six huge points. The answer back for the Bearcats. What do you know about that? 
My goodness. Matt Fiesta gets behind every level of the defense. Shakes the ankle tackle. Rolls into the end zone and with the PAT good off the foot of Camden Dernberger. We are all square at seven apiece. Buckle in, folks. We're going to have a good game here in Salem this afternoon. We'll be right back. Officially 64 yards on that connection. Seven to seven hour score. The Lutes with an impressive drive to open the game, but the Bearcats answer back. Deep drop, deep ball. And 64 yards later, the Bearcats tie the game. A little miscommunication for the Lutes. Able to recover. After a shaky start to that kickoff return. That's either Jai Alapai or Thor Stepina. The Lutes travel their entire roster. They've got 115 guys on this team. They've got two numbers, zero through 14. And every other number on this roster accounted for. So 115 players, they brought them all down from their campus in Parkland, Washington. Chaffin takes the snap, wants to throw, has a man in the flat. Stepina with already his third catch of the contest, I believe. And it is. That one close to the first down marker. Will it move the sticks? It's just short, so second and inches. No, they will now move the sticks. First down for Pacific Lutheran. Ball spotted at the 38. Chaffin with Motoyama behind him. Takes the snap, hands it off. Straight ahead, Motoyama gets through, and he's across midfield into Bearcats territory. Hauled down eventually from behind. Hogan Smith stays with him, able to lock him up, and bring him down, but not before a huge gain. Racing Motoyama, the senior. From Waihia, wa Hawaii. And the Lutes threatening already again inside the 30. Called the 28. Inside handoff, Jacob Shu with his first touch of the day. Not much doing. One, maybe two yards. And the Bearcats player down on the field. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Hogan Smith shaking up on the plate for Willamette. He's off the field under his own power. Chaffin chased down in the backfield. Now tucks it and goes. Able to make something out of nothing anyway. Picks up maybe a yard before he stepped out of bounds. Actually wound up losing a yard. Second and eight. Make it third and nine. So a big play up coming for the Bearcats defense. Initial penetration from Michael Wong chasing him all over that backfield. Defense! 
Chaffin awaits the snap. Jacob Shue in the backfield behind him. Hands it off. Shue has some space over the left side. Gets to the edge between the numbers now. Inside the 20. Hauled down from behind. That's Manu Faleola on the stop, but not before. Jacob Shue is able to reach. Just does get to the line to gain. So a fresh set of downs for Pacific Lutheran. Ball spotted down inside the 18. We'll call it the 17. So first and 10 for the Lutes from the red zone. Back on Rayson Motoyama. Offset to the right of quarterback Darius Chaffin. Chaffin keeps it. Makes two men miss. Gets to the boundary. Relegated out of bounds, but not before. He gains 12 yards, marked out at the five. It'll be first and goal now for Pacific Lutheran. Maybe he's chaffing just a different kind of quarterback in the Northwest Conference. Asked Tim Root if they might actually use a spy technique on Chaffin. So they won't use a traditional spy, but they will adjust here and there as Motoyama takes it from the backfield into the end zone. And the Lutes with consecutive touchdowns on each of their first two drives of the game. So punch and counter punch. Here in the first quarter, three touchdowns already scored. We're barely, not even nine and a half minutes into this game. Just to round off that point about Darius Chaffin. I love this line that interim coach Tim Rood gave me. He said, they'll adjust here and there and how they want to pressure him. They want to dictate rather than react. That's what Chaffin is doing on the field. PAT is good. The Lutes back on top, 14 to 7. We'll be right back. So once again, it's David Perez on kickoff duties for Pacific Lutheran. And his second kickoff here. Three possessions, three touchdowns so far in this game. 14 to 7 hours for kickoff is away. Handled by Fiesta once again inside his own five. Moves to his left, running east and west. Now, oh, a huge face mat upcoming, I can only imagine. Flags fly in. Well, you can see it from up here. Fiesta's helmet jerked all the way back as he neared the sideline of PLU. So tack on 15, and Willamette will open their next drive with very favorable field position. A fine return from Fiesta. Personal foul. Face mask, number 33 of the kicking team. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down, Willamette. Even without? The personal foul. He has to covering a lot of ground, a lot of it, mind you. East and west across the field, but he had made his way across the 20. He was knocked out of the 25, so a 22-yard return. Tack on 15 more, and the Bearcats will start their next drive at their own 40-yard line. Uh oh, Mano Anui back in the shotgun pistol formation with Gabe Herrera behind him. Turns and hands. Herrera, ball's on the turf. And the Lutes think they have it. And I'm pretty sure they do. Well, the Bearcats also saying they might have it. We'll let the officials sort this out. What have we here? The 
And somehow. Willamette is on top of the fumble. Second down. Gabe Herrera game clock. was in fact able to recover his own fumble. I did not see who knocked it out. I, I did see the ball pop free. Getting a look at it on replay. It's kind of hard to tell from that replay angle. How about the quality of our production, by the way? I'm by far the worst part of it altogether. We got a lot of great folks working together to put this broadcast together. Another penalty marker will fly in. We've seen a lot of penalties already in this game as well. These are two teams just getting after it. Each of them a little frustrated on how their season has gone. The Bearcats come in one and four. Their season opening victory Holding. against Laverne down Offense, in Los number Angeles. 10. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay second down. Meanwhile, the Lutes dropped their first two contests in the non-conference. Then won one and have split their two games in league play. They entered today's game two and three. And one and one in the Northwest Conference. We'll try to bring you some other scores from around the conference. Best game of the day ought to be that Pacific Lewis and Clark matchup. Outside of this one, of course. That throw picked off well out in front of the intended receiver. Almost directly into the hands of the awaiting defender for the Lutes. I believe that was Jesse Conda. And if it was, that's his first interception on the season. That pass is off target. Conda right there for it. So the first turnover of the game. Remember it was turnovers last week that really hurt the Bearcats. It's a 14 to seven game a week ago against the very powerful Whitworth attack. With five minutes left in the first half, but a couple of fumbles deep in their own territory doomed the Bearcats. They were never able to recover. Whitworth won that one going away in the second half. Deep drop. No one there. Chaffin taken down the backfield. Ball is loose. Bearcats fall on top of it. Every level of the defense doing their job on that one. Chaffin with nowhere to go, scrambles to his right. The pursuit never let up. Ball stripped from behind. And the fumble recovered by the Bearcats. So on consecutive plays, turnovers for either team. How about the effort of Michael Valtierra coming in and stripping the ball free, forcing the Pacific Lutheran turnover. We've seen it all already in this game, just 10 and a half minutes in. Turnovers on consecutive plays by either team. Oh, oh Manawanui tucks and goes, gets inside the Lutes 40. Gain of three yards, second and seven now for the Bearcats from the far side hash, hash mark. All motions right to left. And a penalty marker flies in before the game. It's going to be a false start whistled against the Bearcats. Covered up off the end of the line. Five yard penalty replay, second down. And it's now the third penalty whistled against PL, or against Willamette, rather. Bearcats would love to clean that stuff up. So third and seven becomes third and 12 now from the Lutes 44. Again, they set up on the far hash. Two setbacks now in the backfield, along with Ho'o Manawanui. Waits for the snap, takes it, turns and hands. Not much daylight there at all. For Khalil Hooper, getting his first touch of the game. 
this stuff for no gain. So now third and long for the Bearcats after they force the turnover. Bunch formation here to the near side, one up top. Single setback behind the quarterback, Ho'o Manawanui. Third and 12 from the Lutes, 44. Snap is away. Pocket collapses, now sliding two is right. And completing the pass to Tyler Epifanio. Welcome back, number 28 in gold. And he's got plenty enough to move the chains. That's a gain of 15 yards inside the PLU 30. Marked down at the 28. Great job of Ho'o Manamanui moving the pocket. Sets his feet, fires a strike. Epifanio there for it. And the Bearcats now from the 28. Straight up the gut. Khalil Hooper, huge carry down inside the 20. Hauled down from behind. Gets to about the 15-yard line. So a 13-yard gain for Khalil Hooper on first down. And just like that, the Bearcats are in the red zone. They'll actually mark them down at the 16. Just under two to play here in the first quarter. Very exciting game thus far. Hooper stays in, sets up behind Ho'o Manawanui. Takes the handoff, dropped in the backfield. Staying with him and finishing the tackle, George Sanko. First man to him would not let go. And Sanko with the TFL. Came into the game with 10 tackles on the season. That's his first tackle for a loss. That changes things a bit for the Bearcats here. Now facing second and a long 11. Call it second and 12 from the Lutes 18. Two wide to the left, one to the right. It's Genovia here on the near side. Hooper takes the handoff inside the 10, gets into the second level of the defense, still carrying tacklers down inside the 10, eventually brought down. Did he get enough for the first? I think they're going to mark him just shy of that line to gain. Yeah, he's about a foot and a half short. So third and about half a yard upcoming. Tough running straight ahead from Khalil Cooper. The graduate transfer from San Jose State stays on the field yet again behind Ho'o Manawanui. Shotgun formation, takes the snap, handoff. It's Hooper again, bounces to his left, fumbles the ball, and I believe it's recovered by Pacific Lutheran. Yep. Already our third turnover here in the first quarter of this game. That one very costly for Willamette. As Hooper had the yard the field, there's a down. fumble recovered by PLU. On the second First effort. But as it poked free, and the Lutes recover, and they will take over. First and 10 from deep, deep, deep in their own territory. Ball marked down just shy of their own four yard line. So Chaffin and the Lutes offense will return to the field. And off, bouncing it left to make it right to left, and tons of yardage here on the near side. It's tripped up. A little sniper out near midfield. He tripped over the numbers here on the near side. Big, big game for Noah Pallets. A lot of daylight here. Took the handoff, went over and around this the left the side. Of the first quarter. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. What a first 15 minutes it was. Three touchdowns, three turnovers. Second quarter action is coming up on the other side of this break.
So a quick apology to the Chafin family out there. I just now am realizing, looking at the pronunciation, got him mispronouncing your son's name. My apologies, everybody. Darius Chafin, the quarterback for the Lutes. I will get that one right for the rest of the of this game. We've got 45 minutes. Me to atone for that costly blunder. First down handoff. AJ Conrad wraps up the tailback. That is a three yard loss. AJ Conrad with instant penetration into the backfield. And that's his third TFL on the season. AJ Conrad's having a nice little game. Comes in today with seven tackles, one sack. Two TFLs to make it three now. He's got three fumble recoveries as well thus far on the young campaign. Chafin's pass. Reeled in with one hand. Nice looking grab for Jacob Shu out of the backfield. Muskers about four yards out of that one. So it will be third and long for the loose. Third and nine from the Bearcats. 44 here. You offense perhaps changing the play. Plenty of time on the play clock as it ticks under 10 as Chafin takes the snap. Deep drop, fires downfield, has a man closing on him. Oh my goodness, that's a tough penalty. Oh gosh. I guess the one thing you can say perhaps there is that Hogan Smith didn't entirely get turned around, but there was very little contact. That ball Pass interference, thrown. number 11 of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous Bailed spot. The Automatic, they first down. Facing third and nine. And that's now the fourth penalty in the early stages of the second quarter now. Whistled against Willamette. 15-yard penalty, moves the ball inside the Willamette 30 down to the 29. Inside handoff over the right side. Spills Motoyama. Gain of a couple. So second and upcoming for PLU. Motoyama stays on the field for the next possession. For the next play, I should say, Chafin. Awaits the shotgun snap. Takes it, hands it off. No, moves to his right. Play fake. Has a man here in the flat. Dumps it off. That's Manuel Phelan. Moving down inside the 10. Finally toppled at about the seven yard line. And it's from there that the Lutes will have first and goal. RPO action, perhaps from PLU. Willamette will rotate several fresh defenders onto the field. Including Vince Becerra, the transfer from Whittier. Here's Chafin, rolling to his right, has a man in the end zone. Nice little pass and led him right to it. Manuel Phelan, his second touchdown of the season. One of the best perimeter receivers in our league, to be sure. And the Lutes now lead it 20 to seven.
Well, just a well-designed play by Pacific Lutheran there on first and goal from the Bearcats' seven-yard line. Not one, but two play fakes in the backfield. Misdirection, Chafin rolls to his right, finds his man in the back of the end zone, Manuel Folon. Do the best to get that one right for the rest of the game as well. A lot of prep for this broadcast. Could have spent some more time looking at the pronunciation guide for Pacific Lutheran. The ball is free there for a few moments. Bearcats with a critical special teams mistake, and it's going to cost them. The ball batted around by two different kickoff returners for Lamet. Bearcats will take over beginning this drive deep in their own territory at their own seven yard line. For Omanuanui. With Herrera behind him. Fires a pass far side of the field. That's Epifanio again, and a penalty marker flies in yet again. have done a very fine job moving the ball thus far in this game. They've already Pass piled interference. up Offense. 16 Number total yards of total Unfeeling. offense. Coming in coming average of just 286 per game on the season. It's Epifanio called for the OPI. Saying that. Well, perhaps they whistled that against Matt Fiesta. Setting what amounts to a little ball screen. In any event, it's first and long from the Bearcats, now pinned way back near their own goal line. From the three, play fake across the middle. Genovia hauls it in, drags a defender across the 20, and it's enough for a first down. How about Justin Genovia hanging in across the middle? Beautiful throw. Oh, Manuanui putting it right on a gain of 17, make it 18 yards out to the 21-yard line. And the Bearcats with some breathing room. They were pinned back against their own end zone. And now, they have a fresh set of downs from the PL, from their own 21. All motions into the backfield. Herrera staggers to his left. The pile forces its way forward, and he falls forward for a gain of two, maybe three yards. Brought down shy of the 25. And will mark it between the 24 and the 25. It's a call to gain a four. Second and a long six upcoming here for the Bearcats. Maybe it will split wide to the far side of the field. Herrera, the single set back in the pistol formation behind Ho'o Manamanui. Second and six. Hand off, Herrera. Make that, excuse me. That is Stephen Wright on the carry. Bearcats second leading rusher a season ago. A little bit lower on the depth chart so far this season, but that's his first carry of this game. Gain of three, it's third and three upcoming now for the Bearcats. Two wides to the far side, one to the near side. Strong side right. Roots bring everyone close to the line of scrimmage. Contact in the backfield. First guy there, Nico Gola. One of the two huge beasts on this team. Seven sacks on the season. Ten TFLs make it 11. After he drops Stephen Wright. And in fact, Stephen Wright coughs up the football and the Lutes recover. So 
Bearcats continue to be plagued with some turnover issues. Loots right back in business inside the Bearcats 25. And off goes to Rayson Motoyama. Scampers to his left. He's outside the far hash. Marked down after a gain of three. Ball came out very late on that last play. That fumble by Stephen Wright. He was bottled up. It's going to be fourth down. He was going to be dropped for about a three or a four yard loss. And I, from up here, couldn't even see that the ball had come out. Second and seven from the Bearcats, 21. Chafin on the keeper, has some space. So dangerous out there on the perimeter. And Chafin dances his way into the end zone. And the Lutes now with their fourth touchdown of the game. They have opened up a 27 to seven lead with the point after try upcoming. Nice little play fake, great blocking. Chafin just uses his blockers both at the line of scrimmage and then downfield. Relatively untouched into the end zone. And once again, here's Cole Sargent, the junior from Edmonds for the PAT. He bangs it through with the loops now with a three touchdown lead. 28 to seven hour score, 914 left here in the first half. Twenty-eight to seven hour score. The Lutes have capitalized once again on some Bearcat miscues. Two turnovers in this game for the Bearcats have led to two Lutes touchdowns. And they now lead it 28 to seven. Kickoff is away off the foot of David Lopez. Settles into the hands. And they're cast down near their own 10 yard line. Elijah Romero on the return. That time for Willamette.
Offside, 69 of the defense. Five yard penalty, replay second down.
Coming on the field is a fumble by Willamette recovered by PLU. First down, Roots. False start, number four of the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Time out, Pacific Lutheran, they're first of the half.
Time out, we'll have it, the first of the half. Time out. Pacific Blue Three. They're seconds in the half.
Timeout, Pacific Lutheran, their third and final of the half. And for Pacific Lutheran, who were forced to burn their final timeout after that spectacular open field tackle from La Alike. So third and ten now for Pacific Lutheran. Huge play. Can the Bearcats defense keep the Lutes out of the end zone? On third down, play fake. Chafin fires to the flat. It's well short of its intended receiver. That ball skips up and into the pads. Of Patrick McInerney. And the Lutes will attempt, elect to attempt. Be a 37 yard field goal off the foot of Cole Sargent. His long on the season is 24. And the Bearcats will elect to call a timeout. Come right back for the final we'll 13 it. seconds. Their second and a half. First half between the Lutes and the Bearcats. Seconds left here in the first half. It's fourth and ten for BLU. They bring the field goal unit onto the field. It's Cole Sargent. He has not made a field goal longer than 24 yards. In fact, he's missed two inside of 29 yards so far this season. This would be a season long for Cole Sargent. It's blocked! Great penetration right up front. The Bearcats block the kick. Ball is recovered across the 30-yard line. And penalty markers fly after the play. I believe we're going to get an unsportsmanlike or an unnecessary roughness against PLU. That's very likely the case. So with seven seconds left, the Bearcats will actually have the ball out near midfield pending the penalty. Still talking about it, trying to get things sorted out. It was tough to see who had the initial penetration on that blocked field goal. Bearcats just blew up the entire interior. Right over the ball. Initial burst right through. Referee's really taking a long time to get this one sorted. Kind of an interesting thing to take a look at. Blue 
points already with 284 yards of total offense. They averaged 344 on the season, so kind of approaching that number already. Here After the blocked field goal was recovered, dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Number 95 of Willamette. Punching and stomping, he has disqualified himself from the remainder of the contest. Those penalties will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down, Willamette. Well, that is what I get once again for <laughs> presuming to know anything about what's going on down on the field. Well, the penalties were actually against Willamette. It was against A.J. Conrad, and he has, in fact, been disqualified from the game going forward. So the Bearcats will be without A.J. Conrad for the final 30 minutes once we return from the halftime break. Speaking of, that is exactly what we were at. Bearcats elect to take a knee after the penalty was enforced against them after they blocked the field goal attempt by the Lutz Cole sergeant. And it is Pacific Lutheran who will take a 28-7 lead into the locker room here at halftime. Folks, we'll step away for about 20 minutes. Please rejoin us shortly thereafter. Second half action between Pacific Lutheran and Willamette coming up in about 20 minutes. organizer and founder of both Indigenous Now and the Indigenous Peoples Day event, pretty much making sure everything's going smoothly. <laughs> Indigenous Now, it, what we do is we advocate and we educate our communities, especially our um, Indigenous and Native students. So this is what we do in our community. We also um, do um, protests also to educate the people of Salem-Kaiser on all of our Native issues. This is a day to let, let people know that we are still here, we are still struggling, there's still a struggle in our, in our society that we still have to fight. Our native issues regarding water, land. Um, we have speakers that will be speaking and we'll have some expedition dancing of our native, of our native dances. There's also some performers that are from the indigenous um, areas of our brothers and sisters south of us. The Red Dress Project is the, um, the way of introducing our murdered and mi missing indigenous relatives. We want to bring awareness to this to let them know that this is real and it's painful for some of us because it's family. And always wanting to re remind people that we are human beings. Follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook pages for any updates or any actions that we're doing. Listen and observe. This is what we were taught when we were little. This is why we're so connected to the earth. So we want people to start listening and learning our histories and our issues so that they can understand the struggles that we've been going through all since 1492.
what seemed to be the entire community of Salem, gathered at Marion Square Park on Saturday, September 16th to attend and to lend a helping hand at this year's Punks in the Park. Punks in the Park is Salem's fastest growing music and resource festival for at-risk youth. Along with band performances and resource booths, there was a free closet for youth, a Build-A-Punk station, free meals and free haircuts for youth, and so much more. We spoke with the founders of Punks with Purpose, the nonprofit that hosts Punks in the Park, about why and how it all started. I created Punks with Purpose because I was a youth experiencing homelessness. Um, unfortunately, my mom had a lot of mental issues and it wasn't very talked about and she didn't have the resources for it. So I wish I had somebody like me, so I became her. Youth were given informational pamphlets with a passport for the 60 plus resource booths that were there. They visited each booth to receive a stamp and in the end, they got a prize. A fun way for the youth to learn about and to access the resources available for them within the community. I was a homeless youth here and uh, what we're doing is uplifting their voices and making sure that they are heard and giving them an outlet. We get a lot of questions as to why we hold it at this park. Um, why not use Riverfront? Why not, you know, there's so many better places for this. It's because we want to meet them where they're at. Let's make a scary place into a fun place. Let's make good memories here instead of bad memories. What really resonated with me was the responses that we got last year. I had a mother come up to me and say, hey, I had a kid that always wanted to skate at this park. Look over there, he's doing it right now. Looking at all of the statistics and whatnot, it's like, wow, this is really needed here. The 2020 U.S. Census showed that for Marion and Polk counties, 6,900 youth and young adults ages 13 to 24 were at risk of homelessness, and more than 1,500 were experiencing homelessness. It started with us in a coffee shop being like, hey, like, even if we have to barbecue, um, bring some resources in a boom box, like, we just need to get youth involved and be like, hey, we have elder punks that are just like you, that we survived, like, we're here to inspire you, we're here to love on you, we're here to support you, and then it turned into a concert, so here it is. <laughs> Right now, our biggest impact is our resource event. We have 60 youth-based resource tables here, which is absolutely wild. You have to serve youth in order to be able to participate here. One resource, Heart to Souls, showed up to do their part as well. Heart to Souls uh, was founded by Mike Cisco and Brian McMullen with the mission to provide uh, local foster youth with a uh, new pair of shoes. We were able to uh, put together about 50 shoes for some of the local youth, and uh, we have them all here ready to go. So, um, yeah, they're going to be swinging by, picking up their shoes. We have a ton of resources here that are youth-focused, but a lot of these youth either don't know about it or are not allowed to reach out to these places. And that's the reason why we do something like this. Like, hey, we're going to a concert, right on. Hey, there's resources, too. Some of the youth that we encounter don't have good days. This is a good day. We give them the stage, we let them tell us their story, we let people hear. The youth are smart, they know what they want, they know what they need, and they need us to listen more than anything. So our youth are very strong and they're very durable, but they shouldn't have to be, like we should be the ones that's empowering them and supporting them. I want the youth to be able to come in here and be like, oh man, what's this? And then leave knowing that they're empowered, supported, that they have community resources, that they can see somebody walking on the street, they see me on the street being like, hey, yo, you're the CMO, and like know that they have a community around them that will guide them and like help them when they're in need. Punks with Purpose officially became a nonprofit as of this year with a mission to provide perspective on the challenges threatening our youth today. To see our community rising up for our youth, is everything to me. There's a lot of organizations that are doing some awesome things for our youth. You can always hit us up at punkswithpurpose.org and we can you know, direct you or guide you like, hey, I have this skill or I have this knowledge. I wanna help, you know, how can I help? We can help direct you and guide you to maybe somewhere where you'll just click and you'll be like, this is great. Much love to our community because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do something this big and reach as many youth as we have. If we all come together, we can help them turn into really functional members in our community and keep this thing growing on and on. To find out more about Punks with Purpose, visit their website at punkswithpurpose.org and find them on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.
Today we are in the Smith Auditorium and we are celebrating the 32nd Willamette University Luau. <laughs> Yeah, it was really nice being able to see the audience out there today and the smiles on their faces. It was also lovely hearing their cheering. Um, but yeah, I really hope that they were able to take a piece of Hawaii with them today and hopefully share their aloha spirit with others as well. If you want to know more information about Hawaii Club at Willamette University, please follow our Instagram at WU underscore HI Club. What seemed to be the entire community of Salem gathered at Marion Square Park on Saturday, September 16th to attend and to lend a helping hand at this year's Punks in the Park. Punks in the Park is Salem's fastest growing music and resource festival for at-risk youth. Along with band performances and resource booths, there was a free closet for youth, a Build-A-Punk station, free meals and free haircuts for youth, and so much more. We spoke with the founders of Punks with Purpose, the nonprofit that hosts Punks in the Park, about why and how it all started. I created Punks with Purpose because I was a youth experiencing homelessness. Um, unfortunately, my mom had a lot of mental issues and it wasn't very talked about and she didn't have the resources for it. So I wish I had somebody like me, so I became her. Youth were given informational pamphlets with a passport for the 60 plus resource booths that were there. They visited each booth to receive a stamp and in the end, they got a prize. A fun way for the youth to learn about and to access the resources available for them within the community. I was a homeless youth here, and uh, what we're doing is uplifting their voices and making sure that they are heard and giving them an outlet. We get a lot of questions as to why we hold it at this park. Um, why not use Riverfront? Why not, you know, there's so many better places for this. It's because we want to meet them where they're at. Let's make a scary place into a fun place. Let's make good memories here instead of bad memories. What really resonated with me was the responses that we got last year. I had a mother come up to me and say, hey, I had a kid that always wanted to skate at this park. Look over there, he's doing it right now. Looking at all of the statistics and whatnot, it's like, wow, this is really needed here. The 2020 U.S. Census showed that for Marion and Polk counties, 6,900 youth and young adults ages 13 to 24 were at risk of homelessness, and more than 1,500 were experiencing homelessness. It started with us in a coffee shop being like, hey, like even if we have to barbecue, um, bring some resources and a boom box, like we just need to get youth involved and be like, hey, we have elder punks that are just like you, that we survived, like we're here to inspire you, we're here to love on you, we're here to support you, and then it turned into a concert, so here it is. <laughs> Right now, our biggest impact is our resource event. We have 60 youth-based resource tables here, which is absolutely wild. You have to serve youth in order to be able to participate here. One resource, Heart to Souls, showed up to do their part as well. But Heart to Souls uh, was founded by Micah Sisko and Brian McMullen with the mission to provide uh, local foster youth with a uh, new pair of shoes. We were able to uh, put together about 50 shoes for some of the local youth and uh, we have them all here ready to go so um, yeah they're going to be swinging by picking up their shoes. We have a ton of resources here that are youth focused but a lot of these youth either don't know about it or are not allowed to reach out to these places and that's the reason why we do something like this like hey we're going to a concert right on hey there's resources too. Some of the youth that we encounter don't have good days this is a good day. We give them the stage, we let them tell us their story, we let people hear. The youth are smart, they know what they want, they know what they need, and they need us to listen more than anything. So our youth are very strong and they're very durable, but they shouldn't have to be, like we should be the ones that's empowering them and supporting them. I want the youth to be able to come in here 
and be like, oh man, what's this? And then leave knowing that they're empowered, supported, that they have community resources, that they can see somebody walking on the street. They see me on the street being like, hey, yo, you're the CMO. And like, know that they have a community around them that will guide them and like help them when they're in need. Punks with Purpose officially became a nonprofit as of this year with a mission to provide perspective on the challenges threatening our youth today. To see our community rising up for our youth is everything to me. There's a lot of organizations that are doing some awesome things for our youth. You can always hit us up at punkswithpurpose.org and we can, you know, direct you or guide you like, hey, I have this skill or I have this knowledge. I want to help, you know, how can I help? We can help direct you and guide you to maybe somewhere where you'll just click and you'll be like, this is great. Much love to our community because if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do something this big and reach as many youth as we have. If we all come together, we can help them turn into really functional members in our community and keep this thing growing on and on. To find out more about Punks with Purpose, visit their website at punkswithpurpose.org and find them on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Today we're celebrating the completion of Ed Davison Field, which is the first of a series of improvements that we're making at our youth sports complex, Pioneer Sports Park. So we're really excited to see the turf come out and everybody who's out here today. I played here when it was mud and dirt from all the way when I was five years old all the way till now. And so to see this space and what it represents for our kids, um, the economic impact that it brings to our community in terms of kids and families coming in to play sports and do these things, it's just a huge investment into the kids in our community. If you want more information, you can visit cfcsalem.com. This has been about a five and a half year effort to come to today. Um, so it's so exciting to have this become a reality, this dream become a reality. Um, it's very significant and it really does speak to the value of this market. We started our first flight, we started flying in uh, April of 2021, April 28th of 2021. So we're coming up almost on two and a half years. We've carried over three million customers to date. We'll do about two and a half million just this year. So we're growing. We fly 16, we have a fleet of 16 Boeing 737 aircraft. We have two types. We have a, a smaller version which has 149 seats, a larger one that has 189 seats. For now, we're going to be flying the smaller airplane up here, but I expect at some point next year you'll start to see some of the 800s as well, which you know take uh, more people because we will need that those seats to handle all the demand. Imagine all these people being able to come and experience the natural beauty of Salem, our amenities, the attractions, sporting events, our arts, our culture. You have now your hotels being filled, you have your restaurants being visited, so it creates a vibrant opportunity for people to have new customers coming in, create remarkable experiences for people because we're so proud of our city. And that generates some real buzz for people because you create kind of an epicenter of energy. People come in, your downtown is vibrant. People want to see a community when they travel to it. We have a really meaningful option rather than going to PDX. We can travel to Vegas, to the LA Basin, and hopefully soon to Phoenix and the Bay Area. It's going to open up the mid Willamette Valley to the world where people can come here, they can do wine tasting, they can do all the things, you know, all the things that our great mid Valley has to offer. Uh, I'm super excited about it. We need to give our city council and our mayor a lot of credit for driving from the community 
perspective and, and a sheer votes perspective and said, we stand behind this effort. You have a Fly Salem committee that came together, uh, Travel Salem, the Salem Chamber stood very firmly behind this, and, and then a city staff coming around that to create a very quick transition of our airport to allow a velo to come in. Our business is built around going into airports that are incredibly convenient, close to a large number of people, and offering choice to consumers so that they can take advantage of a wonderful airport that's local, easy to get in and out of, so you can save time. And then we offer everyday low fares. So you and welcome back to McCullough Stadium, 28-7, our halftime score. It's Pacific Lutheran enjoying a three-touchdown lead here in Salem over the hometown Willamette Bearcats. So a quick look at the numbers, and there's a lot of things going well for the Bearcats in this game. They've made a ton of big plays on defense. They've given up some big plays, sure, hence that 28-7 score, but they've also made as many big plays as they've given up. Four the Lutes, one of the big stories as well, three turnovers. They forced three turn turnovers, one apiece by each of the tailbacks in the rotation for the Bearcats in the first half. Khalil Cooper, Khalil Hooper, excuse me, Gabe Herrera and Stephen Wright all coughing up at least one fumble apiece, and they were all recovered by PLU. So those three turnovers really hurting the Bearcats' cause in the first half, also hurting the Bearcats. Seven turnovers to just one for the Lutes. Time of possession, just about even. Lutes had it for 16 minutes and 15 seconds. The Bearcats for 13 and 45 as we're just about set for the second half kickoff. We'll try to get you some other scores from around the conference here in just a couple of moments as it will be once again handling kickoff duties this afternoon for PLU. David Perez, his right-footed boot is away and the second half is underway. Kickoff comes down into the hands of Matt Fiesta, angles his way here to the near side boundary. Gain of right around 22 yards on the return and a penalty marker. Flies in from across the field. And this one will be marked off against the Bearcats on the return. Penalty from the end of the run, first down, Willamette. Seven penalties in the first half. In the first on the opening kickoff of the second half. Penalty number eight on Willamette, and they will start the drive here from their own 15-yard line. Uh oh Manuanui back at it as the quarterback for the Bearcats. Remember, they do have a change at the backup position today. Jack McCarthy been moved up to number two on the depth chart ahead of Max Grizzell, who's a little banged up and likely unable to go today. Defensive play from the Lutes on the opening play of the first drive of the second half. Great penetration up front. That's Gavin Hawley gobbling up Gabe Herrera in the backfield. Loss of three yards, second and 13 for the Bearcats. Deep in their own territory. Omano in the lead, looks to drop it off in the flat. It's picked off and quickly taken the other way for a pick six. So loss of three yards on the first play of the second half for Willamette. And a pick six taken back by, I believe, Colby Rhinelander of PLU. And the Lutes now with a commanding 34-7 lead. Stepping right into the passing lane in front of Matt Fiesta, who had a long touchdown for Willamette in the first half. Colby Rhinelander is a heck of a player. 28 tackles coming in on the season. He'd broken up five passes. Had yet to have an interception on the season. But he makes his first in INT of 2023 count in a big, big way. He takes it back 11 yards for a pick six. And just like that, PLU with a 35-7 lead. <clears throat> hey, 
Matt Fiesta just a moment ago stood back near his own goal line to receive the second half kickoff. He's back there again after Lutz. Colby Rhinelander picks off a Micah Ho'omanawanui pass and returns at 11 yards for another PLU touchdown. Bearcats gave up a couple of defensive touchdowns last week against Whitworth. Fiesta from just across the goal line. Brings it outside the numbers. Cuts back upfield as he crosses the 20. Brings it out to the 22. And we will once again get a look here at the Bearcats offense here in the second half. So a tough way to start the second half for the Bearcats. They were tagged with a holding call on the kickoff. A three-yard loss after Herrera was brought down in the backfield. That then the pick six. Omanawanui back at it as the quarterback for the Bearcats. Turns and hands it off. Straight ahead, I believe it's Stephen Wright on the carry. Make that Khalil Hooper the ball carrier for the Bearcats. He had the best success of that running back by committee approach for the Bearcats in the first half. No gain on that carry. It's second and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 22. Dylan Hall motions right to left, sets up on the left side of the formation. Three wides to that side of the field. Play fake, dump it off in the flat. It's Fiesta who had the long touchdown in the first half that equalized the game. About six minutes into the contest. Oh, Omano Manui flips that to him in the flat, and he works his way upfield for a gain of four yards. Out to the 26. So third and six now for Willamette at their own 26-yard line. Been a relatively quiet day thus far for Nico Gola and Kalen Davis Wright. The two absolute studs on that side of the ball. Rhinelander, of course, no slouch himself. They've got special guys at each level of the defense. Third and six. Pocket collapses. Ho Omano and Louis scrambles to his left. He's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And he's a little dinged up at the end of that play. Slow to get up. Ho Omano and He's down at the 25-yard line on the loop side of the field. We'll take a quick break as the trainers come out to check on it. Well, certainly good to see Micah Ho'omanawanui walking off the field. Definitely a little shaken up. Familiar face helping him off the field. That, my friends, is former Bearcats quarterback and now quarterback's coach, Aiden Kuykendall. Had a chance to chat with interim head coach Tim Rood about Aiden before the season. Says he's just the leader that you want. He's born to lead. He was approached about the idea of coming back and helping out as the quarterback's coach for this program. The idea just kind of grew on him over the summer after some folks had some chats with him in the spring. Punches away. It checks up at about the 40-yard line. And the Lutes will begin their next drive in decent field position at their own 41-yard line from the far side hash. 35 to seven hour score. Yeah, they're two games in the league. Well, they're tougher than 
this one right now. It's Linfield with a 35 to nothing lead at home on George Fox. And look at this. It was seven to seven at the end of the first quarter over in Spokane between Whitworth and Puget Sound. Whitworth with six second quarter touchdowns. They take a 49 to seven lead into the locker room up on the loggers. So Whitworth with just an absolute explosion. Six touchdowns. It was seven to seven at the end of the first quarter in Spokane. It's now 49 to seven at halftime. The Pirates over the loggers. Gain of seven yards on first down for Pacific Lutheran. Mason Motoyama spinning his way toward midfield. Spun down just shy of the 48. Second and three. Line to gain the Bearcats 49. Play fake. That pass out of reach. And well, Falon, the intended receiver. Leading receiver for this Lutes team. Had a nice little first half for himself. Four catches, 46 yards, and a spike. But a huge third down upcoming for the Lutes near midfield. It's third and three. Can the Bearcats hold again? They've come up big in some high leverage situations so far in this contest. Motion man is Laakea Ane across the formation. High snap, handled, pass into the slot. Timed perfectly, right on the numbers, into the hands of Patrick McInerney, the slot receiver. For this PLU offense, he's got the first down into Bearcats territory. Beautiful pitch and catch there from the Lutes. And they are driving. Mark down at the Willamette 40-yard line. Break the huddle with two wides to the near side, one at the top of the formation. On a offset over the right tackle. Motoyama, play fake to him, another. Little seam route, slot pass snuck inside. That one for Stepina. That's his fifth catch of the game. He also scored a touchdown in the first half. Darius Chafin looking very sharp under center. Man, this PLU offense is clicking here this afternoon in Salem. Sticks move again. First and 10 from the 21 now. Make it the 22. Chafin drops back, dumps it off in the flat. Knuckled out of bounds. Landon Waters with immediate contact. On the backside of Stepina after he reels in the catch. And a curl route up near the far side boundary. Kill you in the red zone. After a gain of about five. Second and five for the Lutes now. At the Bearcats 17. Motoyama stands to the right of Chafin, the PLU quarterback. Takes the snap, backs up to the 25, drops it off on that far side flat once again. This time to the tailback, Motoyama. Short gain. Down to the 15, so another third down. Upcoming for this Bearcats defense. Your tailback on the field, cycles in. It's Jacob Shue. Had a handful of touches in the first half. He's in the pistol behind the quarterback, Chafin, for the upcoming third and three. Play fake again into the flat. Chafin loving the right side in front of his own sideline this time. Once again, it's Stepina with his sixth catch of the day, making his seventh catch now. And it'll be first and goal for the Lutes, right at the Bearcats' 10-yard line. So all three of the games in progress here in the Northwest Conference today. So far, none of them close. This is the closest as it stands. Four touchdown difference. Infield up five scores at halftime on Fox. And Whitworth blowing out Puget Sound at home. Across the middle, broken up nicely. 
How about Landon Waters closing on the intended receiver, able to poke it away at just the right moment. Landon Waters, it's not much of a secret. He is just an absolute beast back there. The converted safety, played safety last year for this team, moved to cornerback in the offseason. And he is having himself a very nice year. That's already his second pass broken up today. And the sixth on the season overall for the six-foot junior from Martinez, California. Second and goal now for the Lutes at the Bearcats 10. On a across the formation, handoff straight ahead, bouncing off defenders. Jacob Shue straight ahead, inside the five, finally brought down. As the cries of Shue go up from the PLU sideline. That's a gain of seven, so third and goal. Luke's nearing the end zone yet again. Ball rests just outside the three-yard line of the Bearcats. Puddle breaks, and look at this, Chafin under center for third and goal. Single set back behind him. Play fake, Chafin now rolls to his left, into the flat, dumps it off, has a man, throws it behind him, but it's gobbled in. Laakea Ane, the tight end slash fullback from Wayana A. Hawaii. And the Lutes continue to add to their lead. It's now 41 to seven with the PAT upcoming. Excellent drive for PLU. Converted on three third downs, including that one from the Bearcats three yard line. Another well-designed play down near the goal line. We saw the Lutes score on a similar play. Off play action in the first half. PAT up and good. It's Pacific Lutheran 42. We'll lamb at seven on the Bearcat Network. We'll be right back. Well, just an all-around good game in the pocket for Darius Chafin, the quarterback for Pacific Lutheran. 21 of 27 passing, 214 yards, three touchdowns now. He's spreading around as well. Stor Thorth Stepina has been his favorite target today. Eight targets, seven receptions, 100 yards even, and a touchdown. That time, though, he finished off that drive with a touchdown pass into the hands. Laakea Ane, his first touchdown of the season. For PLU. Fiesta with another nice return. As he fielded that one about the seven yard line, got across the 20. And it was hauled down out of bounds, just shy of the 30 yard line. So from the 29, first and 10 for the Bearcats. They trail 42 to 7. Halfway through the third quarter. Another fumble. Coughed up yet again by Gabe Herrera, but now, it's, now they're whistling a dead. Hold everything down here on the near side. That's the fourth fumble lost Fort Willamette in this game and the fifth turnover overall. <laughs> Difficult times for the Bearcats here in the second half thus far. Only a few plus plays for them. And that's the second fumble lost and third fumble overall today. Tough day for Gabe Herrera. So after the turnover, here come the Lutes again. 
Set up very nicely. 38 yard line of Willamette. Chafin hands it out. Shoe straight ahead. Not much doing. Swarmed under. A wave of defenders meet him at about the line of scrimmage. Might have actually lost half a yard on that one. They'll actually mark him down right at the line of scrimmage. So no game. For Jacob Shue. He stays on the field in the pistol formation. Two wides to the right. One to the left. The tight end offset on the right side. Play fake. Chafin pumps once to his right. Now wants to bomb it deep down the sideline. His man curling back to the ball, and he's able to haul it in in the end zone. What an amazing throw from Darius Chafin on the receiving end. Patrick McInerney works his way back to the ball. It looked well short. McInerney was running around da down the sideline. And he came all the way back about 10 yards into the end zone to field the catch. A lot of air left under this ball. Stepping into it, hit as he releases the football. And here comes McInerney, kind of flying in from out of the rafters near the far side boundary. The PAT once again is up and good. So three quick touchdowns here in the opening moments of the second half. And it's PLU. Up a whole bunch. The Bearcats turned the ball over three times in the first half. They've turned it over twice more here in the second half. Make it four times in the first half. And twice more here in the second half. So six turnovers overall. And PLU has made them pay every single time. They have opened things up. 49 to seven hour score. 715 to left to play here in the third quarter. David Perez kicks it away. Fiesta moves up his own seven yard line, takes it from there. Works his way now around the left. Huge block out there. And we're going to get a blindside block, I believe, whistled against the Bearcats. You know what, though? I've learned I should just shut up about stuff like this. I have presumed a couple of too many times, and it's, I've paid the price every time so far in this game. I'm just going to let the referees do their business. Because every time that I thought I knew the call, I had it wrong. During the return, personal foul. Illegal blindside block, number 14 of the return team. Penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Block, first down, Willamette. Willamette. The kind of play where you want to applaud the effort, applaud the aggression. It's the kind of thing that you just cannot get away with in this day and age. And the penalty will back the Bearcats up to just across their own 10-yard line after the nice return from Fiesta. It's now first and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 11. New quarterback on the field. For the Bearcats, we are getting a, our look at Jack McCarthy. So Jack McCarthy, the 5'9 junior from Kaiser. Very likely has some family here at the ball game today. McCarthy has appeared in two games thus far for the Bearcats. Played a little bit against Southern Oregon. Most of his minutes logged against Linfield. He's three for 10 on the season. Three for eight of that, however was in that game against Linfield, good for 30 yards. He hands off here. That's Khalil Cooper, the ball carrier. 
Khalil Cooper, the ball carrier. He's back to the original line of scrimmage right at the 11-yard line for the Bearcats. George Fox now on the board in McMinnville. It's 41 to six Wildcats. McCarthy takes the snap, three-step drop. Now rolls to his left, has some room to run, looks downfield, fires a pass. It's a little ways out of the outstretched hands and into the sideline of Pacific Lutheran. And the punt unit will make their way onto the field for the Bearcats. If you're old enough to remember, you know how much pride and rich history Pacific Lutheran brings with it down the road from Parkland, just south of Tacoma, nestled away in between Parkland and Puyallup, Washington. State Route 512. It's a Pacific Lutheran football program that in a 20 year span between 1980 and 1999 appeared in eight national championship games. Of course, all those coming under legendary head coach Frosty Westering. If you know Northwest Conference football, you know all about Frosty Westering, head coach at PLU for 32 years. Again, eight national championship appearances in a 20-year span. That's just ridiculous. We all know how good Linfield has been over the last six decades. Six decades of winning football at Linfield. Well, you know what? PLU was in lockstep with them for a very, very long time in this league. Of those eight championship appearances in those 20 years, four of them resulted in national championships for the Lutes. Just a couple of national tournament appearances since then. And Frosty Westering, I believe, retired at around 2003 after being at PLU for 32 years. Man, oh man, what a legacy he left with that program. Inside give. That's John Tyrell Smith, the ball carrier for the Lutes, getting some reps. As we are, in fact, getting our first look at Logan Rodriguez, the sophomore quarterback for Pacific Lutheran. He comes in so far on the season, 8 of 15 passing for 33 yards and a couple of touchdowns. So the day likely finished for Darius Chafin, but not before he put up monster numbers in this one. Giving way now to Logan Rodriguez. Uncorks his first pass of the day, but it's in and out of the hands at about the 30-yard line here on the near side boundary. As we are getting a look at some of the second and third string players, that was Seth Kramer who couldn't haul in that pass. Luke's on fourth and short will elect to go for it. Rodriguez awaits the shotgun snap. Inside handoff. Not sure he got there. John Tyrell Smith was wrapped up pretty quickly. Bearcats with immediate penetration in the backfield, and they I believe they dropped him short. So that is the second time today that the Lutes have turned the football over on downs. The score of this football game doesn't at all tell the story of the effort much of the day that the Bearcats defense has in fact turned in. They have made some big, big, big plays in this game. And once again, Jack McCarthy assumes quarterback responsibilities. For the next series for Willamette. Nice little inside move, Stephen Wright. Cuts right then left. Gain of six yards out to the Bearcats 40 yard line. Nice little gain on first down. Trajan Clark back on the field, one of three wide outs bunched to the left of the formation of the Bearcats on second and four. One to the near side. Now Dylan Hall 
motions into the line. McCarthy takes the snap. Takes the handoff. Pass intended for Genovia across the middle. Slotting in. Genovia is limping off. In fact, he'll just take a seat down on the McCullough Stadium turf here for just a moment. Injury timeout on the field. That'll give us just a quick second to catch our rest. We'll be right back. Well, let's definitely hope for good things to come for Justin Genovia, able to get off the field. But he was hobbled there for a moment, tried to get off the field, and eventually just needed a little bit of assistance. Third and four for the Bearcats. Three wide to the near side. None of the top of the formation. McCarthy takes the snap, dumps it off underneath. Has a man and a first down. That is Brandon Johnson with his third catch of the year. That's good for first down yardage into Luke's territory. They'll mark him down just across midfield. Set it down right at the 49-yard line and a fresh set of downs to work with for Jack McCarthy and the Bearcats offense. That's going to play on third and short for the Bearcats. Tough snap. McCarthy able to handle it, but winds up just going down in the backfield. And a penalty marker flies. And it's getting a little bit ugly out here all of a sudden. Lots of guys going after it. Bearcats coaches come running down the sideline to keep everyone from going onto the field. More markers come out now. Well, tempers flaring. Frustration definitely boiling over. Might take the referees just a few moments to get this one sorted. So we'll step away here for just a second. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five penalty markers currently on the field here at McCullough Stadium. Referee's still talking about it, trying to get everything sorted out. It started with a dead ball foul against the Lutes, but then things kind of escalated from there. Got some shoving, first on the Willamette side, and a couple of guys reacting to that from the PLU side. Let's distract you from all of that here for just a moment, though, and just kind of come back to talk about this PLU football program. Fr Frosty Westering, of course, just the Hall of Fame coach. Four national championships, eight national title appearances in that 20-year span. Linfield, of course, has been the de facto best team in this league, bar none, for a very long time. But PLU was perhaps the best team in this league under Frosty Westering for much of the time that, that he was there. I'm not quite sure what the number is on consecutive winning seasons for Linfield. I think it's approaching 65 or something absurd like that. Six and a half decades with a winning record. But the success that the Lutes sustained for a very, very long time. You know, interestingly, Take it back a little further even. Marv Harshman. If that name sounds familiar, it should. A head basketball coach both for the Cougars and the Huskies up in Washington. 
He was with Washington State basketball for 13 years, the head basketball coach at Washington for another 15 years. But before that, he was a four-sport athlete at Pacific Lutheran, earning 13 letters in four sports. And when he graduated, you know what he did? He went and served three years in World War II before coming back to Parkland and becoming the head football coach for seven years. And while he was the head football coach at Pacific Lutheran, he was also the head baseball coach for five years. And then he left to coach basketball at Washington State and then ultimately Washington. How about that? Marv Harshman, an absolute legend in the Northwest. Played his career his athletic career, his collegiate career, I should say, was actually drafted into the NFL by the New York Cardinals. Yes, the New York Cardinals. It was the Chicago Cardinals. Anyway, so Marv Harshman, who was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 1985 and then also the National College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2006. In fact, he was part of the inaugural class of folks inducted into the College Basketball Hall of Fame, the very first class ever. But it all started for him back at Pacific Lutheran the way the back play in the fourth. is going to be second down. In the dead ball period, there are multiple fouls by both teams, resulting in ejections. Dead ball foul, number 94, PLU. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Number seven, what, for who? For PLU. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Number 75, Willamette. And number 41. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Number 41, Willamette. The players that are ejected are Willamette, 75. Willamette, 41. PLU, number seven. PLU, number seven. All, all five. Everything is offset. The result is second down. Timeout, Willamette. We've had multiple ejections here in the game. Nasir Ford for Pacific Lutheran has been ejected, as has Dayton Roberts and Ray Passe for Willamette. So three players ejected and a timeout on the field. We'll be right back. Well, it feels like it's been about an hour and a half since we played football here in Salem, but we are, in fact, about to get back after it. It is second and 13 upcoming for the Bearcats. Ball resting right at their own 48-yard line. McCarthy back to work. The quarterback for the Bearcats. The relief of Micah Ho'omanawanui. I believe Stephen Wright sets up in the pistol behind him. Two wide to the right, one to the left. And Dylan Hall, the motion man. Moving right to left. Hands off, Stephen Wright crashing down along the line of scrimmage, flying in. I believe that might have been Colby Rhinelander flying in to make the tackle. Kellen Mead coming off the edge from the corner position. Wright stuffed for no gain. Check that, that was. Linebacker Braden Samura making the tackle. Third and 13. McCarthy drops back, steps up, throws, and is picked off. Davin Waters all the way down inside the red zone. The seventh turnover of the contest by the Bearcats. Pacific Lutheran with possession. And at the Bearcats, 18-yard line. Let's go. 
Logan Rodriguez with John Tyrell Smith behind him. Snap nearly sails over his head, but a penalty marker will stop everything before the play. Delay a game. Offense number 18, five yard penalty. Still first down. Play clock expires. Back salutes up to the Bearcats 23. 49 to 7 our score. George Fox has trimmed the Linfield advantage to 41 to 13. In that contest in McMinnville, and it's Whitworth continuing to put it on Peter Sound. They lead 56 to 7 over in Spokane. Second and five for the Lutes. Logan Rodriguez, sophomore from Sunnyside, Washington, awaits the shotgun snap. Tough snap, able to handle it, hands it off. Tyrell Smith with nowhere to go. Instantly bottled up and dropped for perhaps a loss. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing more. They will, in fact, give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. Standing play from La Alike, never giving up at all. Dude has always got that motor running. So third and five now for the Lutes from the 13. Heck of a tackle from Lique. Rodriguez fires into the far side flat. That pass falls at the feet of its intended receiver. And it'll be fourth and Five now for PLU, and they will bring kicker Cole Sargent back onto the field. His first field goal attempt of the game was blocked in the late stages of the first half. Sargent will walk it off and attempt now a 30, maybe a 31, a 30-yard field goal. All spotted, kick is up, and it's good. Now Cole Sargent. The season best 30 yard field goal. And the Luke's now over the half century mark. They lead it 52 to 7. We'll be right back. The result of the play is a successful try. After the play, dead ball unsportsmanlike, number 94, PLU. He has been ejected. At the end of the play, we had our fifth ejection of the game. Yep, 94-4. The Lutz has been ejected. That's his second unsportsmanlike. He was tagged for his first unsportsmanlike in that big scrum that resulted in the ejections of three players, two for Willamette and one for Pacific Lutheran. With his second unsportsmanlike, he now has been removed from the contest. So three players. The unsportsmanlike penalty will be enforced and on this kickoff. Pacific Lutheran. 15 yards to the 20. Have been disqualified. The penalty also backs the kickoff. For David Perez all the way back to the 20 yard line of Pacific Lutheran. So Fiesta now stands just shy of the Bearcats 20 yard line as he awaits the kickoff. Perez is ready, approaches the ball, 
lets it fly. Fiesta slides a couple of steps to his right. Catches it right at the 20. Hit the 30, crosses the 35. Cuts back across the 40. And Fiesta a little dinged up. He goes to the field. He's immediately picked up by a couple of teammates and be helped off from there. Let's hope Matt Fiesta is okay. The 24-yard return sets up the Bearcats, first and 10 for their next possession. Actually ran in the backside of one of his own players. As you see in your replay, it's off to all the guys down in the truck for all their hard work. Give you the opportunity to see these plays not once but twice. McCarthy, high snap, able to handle, hands it off, straight ahead. Khalil Hooper on the carry. Nets a few. He's out to the 47. Eight and three. Hooper will come off. Stephen Wright will come back in. Brandon Johnson and Epifanio split out on the far side of the formation. Dylan Hall, right to left, settles in on the left side of the line. Steven Wright, the handoff. His one-man miss slides to his left and is brought down after a gain of two. This is the end of the third quarter. Thank and God. Final play of the third frame. 15 more minutes, 15 more minutes of football coming up on the other side of this break. Third and five for the Bearcats as we get set for fourth quarter action. McCarthy waiting for the snap. Takes it, looks to his right. Now he stumbles back to his left. He's tripped up in the backfield and dropped. Zach Budnack got a hand on him. Just enough the, by, the, by the studs of his shoes, basically. That's a massive loss for the Bearcats. We're back to their 44. And now, on for his fifth punt of the day, George Wiles Kohler steps back onto the field. Cody Sigler stands astride the 15-yard line. High snap, gobbled in by Wiles Kohler. Punches away, angling toward the near side boundary. Checks up at about the 26, and is eventually batted out of bounds. about the 30-yard line of Pacific Lutheran. The second play from scrimmage of the fourth quarter. In the third quarter, it's scrimmage. Upcoming, but the first for Pacific Lutheran here in the fourth frame. They have gone final in McMinnville. Linfield moves to 5-0 on the season. 41-13 victors today over George Fox. That's a design play here for PLU. Rodriguez slides to his left, completes the pass. Penalty markers fly. All the way down to the Bearcats' 40-yard line goes. I believe 
Jalen Edwards, maybe Steele Swinton. They've got two wideouts. They both wear number nine for this PLU team. Not sure which of the two that is. Personal foul. Illegal blindside block, number 81 of the offense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So Still how first down. Is this? Jalen Edwards and Steele Swinton are both wideouts for PLU. They're both five foot eight and they weigh about the same amount. How in the world am I supposed to tell those dudes apart? <laughs> Take your pick. It was one or the other. That effort all completely wiped out, however, by the illegal blindside block. Personal foul whistled against Pacific Lutheran. And before the play, the referees fly in and stop everything as the Bearcats will call for a timeout. We'll step away for just a moment. So first and seven, but a false start on the loops. It's going to back him up, another five. False start, so in case you're curious ten of the offense. Five-yard penalty, seven. still first down. Because that illegal blindside block happened all the way downfield. So they marked it 15 yards from the spot of the foul. So the loops actually netted three yards on that long pass play that would have taken them all the way to the Bearcats' 40. Called in by either Swinton or Edwards. Not sure which. <laughs> the ball start now backs him up an additional five, so it's first and 12 now for PLU at their own 28. Rodriguez. Last set back to his left. Rolls to his left. Fires downfield. Has a man, but leaves it too far. Carson Olmstead, 6'5", sophomore tight end from Toledo, Washington. Couldn't quite get a big bear paw on that one. And it's second and 12 for Pacific Lutheran at the 28. And then there's another big, big football game in the Northwest today. They're trying to keep an eye on it. It's a close one in Seattle. The Huskies and Ducks going at it. By the way, speaking of the Huskies and the Ducks, a very familiar name to football fans in the Northwest and the Pac-12. Johnny DeRocher is on the staff. He's one of the wide receivers coaches for this PLU football program. Johnny DeRocher started his college career as a quarterback for Oregon before transferring to Washington. And he actually wound up playing some baseball for the Huskies baseball program. I wonder who he's rooting for in that other game up the road today. Does he root for the Huskies? Does he root for the Ducks? I imagine he's probably a Huskies fan at this point, having finished his playing career there. Anyway, Johnny DeRocher, a very familiar name and face in Northwest football lore. One of the few guys who's made that transfer from Oregon to Washington. Rodriguez uncorks one down the sideline on third and 12. It's out of reach, and the Lutes will be forced to punt for the second time today. One more game yet to go in the Northwest Conference, and it ought to be a good one. Take a look at the standings. Winfield now 5-0. They move their record. They're 3-0 in league play. After their victory at home over the George Fox, their record drops to 0-3 in league play, 1-5 overall. Whitworth handling business against Puget Sound. They'll be 3-0 and 5-0 in league play. Punt nearly blocked. Might have gotten a piece of it. It's a high short kick, but it... Actually takes a massive PLU roll for it's covered up. By Justin Genovia. 
at the Bearcats 37 yard line. So Andrew Camito does a nice job getting that punt away. That's 35 on the punt. And the Bearcats back in business at their own 37. McCarthy hands it off. It's Khalil Hooper straight up the gut. Picks up two. Marked down at the 39. Still a lot of time left in this football game. So we're kind of following along similar lines as our game last week. Remember, that was a 14-7 game last week against Whitworth. With five minutes left in the first half, a couple of tough penalties, or excuse me, tough turnovers on the part of the Bearcats. Late in the first half resulted in 10 almost immediate points for Whitworth. Kind of broke the spear to the Bearcats. They trailed 24-7 at halftime. Whitworth, of course, just ran away with that game in the second half. Not unlike what's happened out here today. It's a very competitive game. Extremely entertaining first quarter. Three touchdowns and three turnovers in the first 15 minutes alone. It's a 14 to seven contest. A couple more turnovers really hurt the Bearcats. And then PLU just came out in the second half just like Whitworth did last week. They just put their foot on the gas. PLU with a narrow victory. 17 to 10 last week against Pacific. They face Lewis and Clark today. That should be a very competitive game. Pacific one and three overall. Lewis and Clark two and three. Buff the punt, but it's recovered by the Lutes. More guys getting tangled up. I think everything's okay. No one's any worse for the wear on that one. Cooler heads prevailed. It'll be PLU ball at the 26-yard line. So we told you about Johnny DeRocher a moment ago. There's another very familiar name on this PLU coaching staff as well. How about Kettner Cup? He's not quite as famous as his brother Cooper, but both played at Eastern Washington in the Big Sky Conference. Rivals of Portland State, just up the road from here. And while most folks are likely aware of how good a player Cooper is in the NFL for the Rams, what you might not know is that Kettner played in four preseason games for the Rams himself. Not only were the Cubs teammates at Eastern Washington up in Cheney, they were also briefly teammates down in Los Angeles with the Rams. Now their parents, Craig and Karen, they both attended PLU back in the day and each of those two are enshrined in the Lutz Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, in fact, Craig Cup, father of Kettner and Cooper, was a quarterback on the 1987 Lutz National Championship football, National Championship football team before going on to play briefly in the NFL for the Giants, Cardinals, and Cowboys. Breaking away for a long, long touchdown. Jace Alomar takes it to the house for Pacific Lutheran. Just takes the pass, picks up a block. A couple of Bearcats defenders taken out on that block up with a far side boundary. And despite the tough snap, the hold gets down. And Pacific Lutheran now with a 59 7 lead.
Well, 59 to seven hour score, and it will be Andrew Kamita back on the field. He's the regular kickoff guy for the Lutes team. Now it's been David Perez handling kickoffs until this point so far today, but Kamita will take this one. He raises his hand, approaches the ball. His kick is away, drives it. And a fair catch called for by the Bearcats, so it will move to the 25, and it's from there that the Bearcats will begin their next drive. I just want to quickly circle back. So Craig and Karen Cup, parents of Kettner and Cooper Cup. We talk about Craig, how he was on the 87 Lutz National Championship team. Actually played briefly in the NFL for a few different teams. Now, let's talk about mom Karen for just a moment as well. She was an outstanding soccer player at PLU, and in fact, she has one more national championship than, than Craig. The Lutz won back-to-back -back national championships in women's soccer on her watch in 1988 and 1989. Steven Wright on the carry. Pushes the pile out near the 30. I believe they'll mark them just shy of there. They'll spot it right down at the 29, so a gain of four. Stephen Wright. Good to see Stephen Wright working his way back into the mix. Again, second leading rusher for this Bearcats football program a season ago. He and Joe Castillo kind of split time in the backfield. Castillo since graduated. Wright with some eligibility left. Comes back. A couple of guys move ahead of him in the depth chart. But Stephen Wright back out there. And a false start before the play. Go back. The Bearcats back near the original line of scrimmage. So be second and 11 here upcoming. Five yards penalty. Wright didn't have a touch. Still second down. The first four games of this season. Got in last year, it, er, last game I should say. Last week, got a handful of carries. Back out there again today. What that tells me is he's just putting in the work and practice. Earning his way back for the top spot in the rotation. Gets it off, takes it again. Works his way up the right side. Comes back to where he was brought down initially. This time for a gain of nine. Now they'll spot him down to 28. He's second and seven now. Now the seventh carry of the contest. For Stephen Wright. LaPlante motions into the backfield. It's coming, picked up nicely. Wright on the carry. Spins across the 30. Fell at the 32. But it brings up fourth and three for the Bearcats, and they will trot the punt unit back onto the field. So Linfield and Whitworth at the top of the league, both 5-0 and o overall now. Good punt. Twisting and turning the fourth. Hauling it in. Davin Waters works his way back to the 35. Make it a 38-yard line, but a couple of penalty markers on the field. So we'll get that sorted out. During the return, holding number one of the return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, PLU. A more shot for penalty. That'll back the loops up. 22 yards from the spot of the foul. All the way back to their own 16-yard line. And we'll get a look at the third quarterback of the day onto the field for Pacific Lutheran.
This is Cody Sigler. He's listed as a wide receiver on the roster. Is that just a wildcat formation, or is he actually in as the quarterback for the Lutes? Well, he lines up once again behind the center, so let's call Cody Sigler the new quarterback for Pacific Lutheran. In the game with a little over eight minutes left. Pistol formation, Tyrell Smith behind him. Two to the near side, one to the top. And off to Tyrell Smith, tries his luck over the right side of the line. Dropped after the gate of one, maybe two. Not much doing. Jonathan Tyrell Smith. Junior tailback out of Silicon, Washington. Moves it to the 18 yard line. It'll be third and long for Pacific Loop 3. This victory will even the Lutes record at three and three on the season. Long pass. How about that? Cody Sigler, the wideout for the Lutes. That is a tough throw to make. On the run, moving to his left. Rips off a pass. Well done. Throws across his body, even. Finds his man in front of his own bench. So now back to the 36. Sigler fakes the handoff. That pass reeled in for a short game. Seth Kramer, sophomore from Wiley, Texas, on the receiving end of that one. Four. Ziggler in those pink boots remains in as the Lutz quarterback. Has to come to the near side now. Catchable ball, but in and out of the hands. Javon Harris out on the numbers. Third and six now for the Lutes at their own 45. Three hundred and sixty-nine yards passing now for Pacific Lutheran. Five hundred and eleven yards of total offense program that came in averaging just 344 yards per game. Offensive explosion for PLU. The first two guys miss in the backfield on Sigler. But uh-uh, Manu Faleola comes in and drops Sigler for a loss of what was that? Six yards. How about Manu Fane? Excuse me, Faleola. This is someone that interim head coach Tim Rude talks a lot about with just nothing but reverence. He says that he's a kid who just made a ton of sacrifices for this team. That punt partially blocked. It's up in the air. And if I'm not mistaken, Caden Webb could have just taken that back for a Willamette touchdown. It came down into his hands and sort of floated down to him. But he looked up at it and called for a fair catch. That punt partially deflected. Got a piece of that. Let's have a look-see. Caden Webb could have walked in for a special teams touchdown for Willamette instead of Lex. With a fair catch, just wanted to put the offense back on the field and give them some reps. Why not? So we will get Jack McCarthy back on the field with Khalil Hooper in the backfield behind him. So just real quick, just want to finish the point about Manu Faleola. 
and just how much love that interim head coach Tim Root has for that kid. Just says that he just does nothing but sacrifice for this team. He just comes out and balls out all the time. He calls him the team's silent assassin, that he just makes plays all day, but that you might not detect all the things that he does for his team. But the kid from Utah really loves to play. Just knows, has just a nose for the game as well. Knows how to play and plays the right way. And he had a big sack a few moments ago in this contest. Hooper dropped. Loss on that one. So now it's second and 16 for the Bearcats. Under five to play now. McCarthy takes the snap, drops back. Looking left, fires downfield. That throw a little bit behind the intended receiver, Brandon Johnson. Can't come back to it. And it sails out of bounds. So third and very long now for the Bearcats. In plus territory. Ball down here at the Pacific Lutheran 40-yard line. Epifanio and Nick Goff split out here to the near side. Brandon Johnson at the top of the formation, all the way over. Hear the numbers on the loop side of the field. McCarthy rolls to his right, it's kicked off. He's been perfectly in the position to make that interception. Is Mouse Williams getting some burn? And the 6'1 sophomore from Henderson, Nevada. Gets an INT. And that is now turnover number seven for Willamette here in this game. Sigler back out there as the quarterback for Pacific Lutheran. He turns and hands. A couple of yards and a cloud of dust. Maybe not even that. And Mark the ball carrier back at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one. So again, it's Linfield and Whitworth, the cream of the crop here in the Northwest Conference. They sit atop the standings, both undefeated. Victorious already today in the clubhouse, 5-0. Those two will meet in the season finale. What if they both run the table between now and then? What a game that will be to close the season in the Northwest Conference. the organizer and founder of both Indigenous Now and the Indigenous Peoples Day event. Pretty much making sure everything's going smoothly. <laughs> Indigenous Now, it, what we do is we advocate and we educate our communities, especially our um, Indigenous and Native students. So this is what we do in our community. We also um, do um, protests also to educate the people of Salem-Kaiser on all of our Native issues. This is a day to let, let people know that we are still here, we are still struggling, there's still a struggle in our, in our society that we still have to fight our native issues regarding water, land. Um, we have speakers that will be speaking and we'll have some expedition dancing of our native, of our native dances. There's also some performers that are from the indigenous um, areas of our brothers and sisters south of us. The Red Dress Project is the, um, the way of introducing our murdered and mi missing indigenous relatives. We want to bring awareness to this to let them know that this is real and it's painful for some of us because it's family. And always wanting to re remind people that we are human beings. Follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook pages for any updates or any actions that we're doing. 
Listen and observe. This is what we were taught when we were little. This is why we're so connected to the earth. So we want people to start listening and learning our histories and our issues so that they can understand the struggles that we've been going through all since 1492. Let's welcome today's guest, Airport. Hey, Luis, you know, TV isn't the only thing we do at CC Media. Really? TV is everything in the capital community media. Not anymore. We're launching a brand new radio station, 98.3 FM. Whoa, that's so cool. I'm going to check it out right now. You are listening to KMWB 98.3 FM, <laughs> your community radio station for the Mid Willamette Valley. Have you or your child played sports or music in the Salem-Kaiser School District? If it's been within the last 30 years, chances are CC Media has covered the game or performance. Formerly known This has been about a five and a half year effort to come to today. Um, so it's so exciting to have this become a reality, this dream become a reality. Um, it's very significant and it really does speak to the value of this market. We started our first flight, we started flying in uh, April of 2021, April 28th of 2021. So we're coming up almost on two and a half years. We've carried over three million customers to date. We'll do about two and a half million just this year. So we're growing. 
we fly 16, we have a fleet of 16 Boeing 737 aircraft. We have two types. We have a, a smaller version which has 149 seats, a larger one that has 189 seats. For now, we're going to be flying the smaller airplane up here, but I expect at some point next year you'll start to see some of the 800s as well, which you know take uh, more people because we will need that those seats to handle all the demand. Imagine all these people being able to come and experience the natural beauty of Salem, our amenities, the attractions, sporting events, our arts, our culture. You have now your hotels being filled, you have your restaurants being visited, so it creates a vibrant opportunity for people to have new customers coming in, create remarkable experiences for people because we're so proud of our city. And that generates some real buzz for people because you create kind of an epicenter of energy. People coming in, your downtown is vibrant. People want to see a community when they travel to it. We have a really meaningful option rather than going to PDX. We can travel to Vegas, to the LA Basin, and hopefully soon to Phoenix and the Bay Area. It's going to open up the mid Willamette Valley to the world where people can come here, they can do wine tasting, they can do all the things, you know, all the things that our great mid Valley has to offer. Uh, I'm super excited about it. And we need to give our city council and our mayor a lot of credit for driving from the community perspective and, and a sheer votes perspective and said we stand behind this effort. You have a Fly Salem committee that came together, uh, Travel Salem, the Salem Chamber stood very firmly behind this and, and then a city staff coming around that to create a very quick transition of our airport to allow Avello to come in. Our business is built around going into airports that are incredibly convenient, close to a large number of people and offering choice to consumers so that they can take advantage of a wonderful airport that's local, easy to get in and out of so you can save time, and then we offer everyday low fares so you can save time and save money, and that's, that's who we are. What the draw is here is our wine country. We're also the capital city of Oregon, and a lot of visitors want to experience the capital cities as they travel. And actually, Salem uh, was one of the only cities in the country that is getting new service. Most airports are actually adding service. To me, it's about access. And to come into a community, rather than have to land in Portland and then come down into Willamette Valley, now you have direct access. We have a rental car facility, uh, ample parking, very affordable. Uh, so our residents have an easy way to get out. Well, we're starting with Las Vegas today, and tomorrow is Burbank. So we're going to start with those two. We think there's a lot more opportunity than simply those two, but we're going to make sure these two work and work well, and then we'll see what the future holds. We know that the impact is going to be great. It's going to change the landscape of our community and our economy for the better. And so we're really excited about that potential and um, ready to make it happen. Hi, welcome to Eat Well, Be Happy. I'm Deborah. I'm Alyssa. And you are in for a treat today. We're kind of making a meal that feels like the holidays yes. to us. We're making a creme caramel mm. spiced for the holidays. And a deconstructed blue polenta casserole. And then also we're going to be finishing that off because we're doing your damage with heavy food. Mm. We're going to be serving you a salad that has uh, cultured vegetables and beets and apples, etc. So Wonderful. here we go. So I thought we would make the, the um, creme caramel first. And I have to say, I made this for my chess club and I made it using coconut milk. Mm. And there were some people there who were absolutely thrilled because one of them had a grandchild who can't do dairy. Right. So you can make this with whatever kind of milk you like whether it's almond milk, whether it's soy milk, whether it's, as we're using today, half and half from happy grass-fed cows here in Massachusetts. Um, this one comes from Highland Farm, and I just love it because mm. I know how they treat their animals. Yeah. So if you're using dairy, make sure you're using full fat, 
coconut too, make sure you're using full fat, and make sure you know where your dairy's coming from. So know your farmer, make sure that your cows are grazing because then they have more CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, in that dairy products, which helps prevent belly fat. Hmm. So bet you didn't know that. Did not know that. So we're gonna put in our, if you have a regular blender, this you'll need to blend this a couple of minutes, three mm -hmm. or four minutes. In a Vitamix, it's, us, it's really 30 seconds. Yeah. So two cups. Now if you use soy milk or rice milk, it's yeah. kind of thin, would that have the same yeah. thickness? Or? So I probably would use an extra egg or two, but okay. again, whatever you're using, make it full fat. 